Hey everyone, this is Caleb Chamberlain from CH Robotics. Today I'm going to walk you through how to connect the UM7 orientation sensor to your computer using the new USB expansion board. Uh, we'll also cover the basics of how to use the CHR serial interface to plot data and interact with the sensor in other ways. So to get started, uh, the first thing you'll want to do is make sure that you have the right software installed. So from the CH Robotics webpage, we, uh, we're on the UM7 product page. We're going to scroll down to the Resources tab and then download the CHR Serial Interface Windows Installer. It's about 5 megabytes, doesn't take too long to download. It's actually already installed on this machine, so I won't install it again, but uh, this is where you'll find it and that's how you, uh, how you access it. We'll also need drivers for the FTDI uh, USB Expansion Board, so we'll click Related Products, go to the USB Expansion Board, Click Resources, and uh, then there's a link link to the FTDI download page. We can download the setup executable to install the drivers on Windows. There's also drivers for window for Linux or Mac OS X and so on. Uh, if you download the setup executable to install the drivers on Windows, you'll want to run that as an administrator. Otherwise, you won't have the rights uh, to uh, to update the drivers there. Okay, so once you have the drivers installed, go ahead and plug in the USB expansion board and the UM7 like so, and then plug it into your computer. Once the drivers are installed, you can open the CHR serial interface. And if you're just running, just plugging the uh, USB expansion board in for the first time, then it'll show up as the largest numbered serial port, which in this case is COM9. So I'll select that and click Connect. And notice that we've received a packet ID message from the sensor, which identifies the firmware vision revision, which is currently U71B, which is what we expect. Notice that once we're connected, the RX light on the USB expansion board is flashing, and that means the U UM7 is transmitting like it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and click on data um, so that we can start and look at the, uh, the sensor data coming from the device. So in the data tab, I'll click gyro data, select processed X, Y, and Z gyro data, and click create graph from selected items. And notice that we're plotting gyro data. I can pick this up and rotate it around the Y axis, around the X axis, and finally around the Z axis. And notice that it responds. So that's running like we expect. Notice, however, that while the sensor is stationary, and we'll let this settle for a bit, there we go. While the sensor is stationary, we're actually measuring non-zero rates from the rate gyros, even though we're not moving at all. And this is because the, the uh, gyro biases haven't been zeroed. So we're going to go ahead and click on commands and then double-click zero rate gyros. And notice that the, that the uh, gyro rates go to zero as, as we want them to be. So I'm going to write those to flash so that uh, we don't have to do this again when we start up. Now let's have a look at the accelerometer data. Okay, we are stationary, we're flat and level, and that means the X and Y accelerometer outputs are close to zero as expected, and as I rotate it around, that data does change. And finally, we can have a look at the magnetometer data. You can open essentially as many graphs as you want using the serial interface, and you can plot any combination of data. You're not limited to just three pieces of data. You could plot, for example, all the gyro, accelerometer, and magnetometer data on one graph if you wanted to. And notice as we move it around the magnetometer data changes. So the sensor is connected, it's running like we expect, and uh, we can do other things to configure the sensor and we'll go over that in future videos.